Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly to God be the glory. All honor and all praise belong to him. Heavenly Father, here I am. And here we all are. All because of you. And we thank thee. And I thank thee, dear Lord God, for speaking through me. For without thee, dear Lord God, the wisdom and the understanding of your word, dear Lord God, I would not receive. But I thank thee for using me to share what thus says the Lord. Father, prepare the heart to receive, dear Lord God, as we give thee the praise, the honor, and all the glory. In no other name but our name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, I do pray thee, amen, amen, and amen. Truly to God be the glory. Say good morning to everyone, to all that is online, to all that may see this, and to everyone that have ears to hear. It's amazing as to how God always said, you, you know, ears to hear and never mention eyes to see because faith comes by hearing amen comes only by hearing we just thank god for it this morning <clears throat> i'm gonna do something a little different you know i know people don't like to be talked about you know they don't mind you talking to them but they don't want you talking about them Amen. But this morning, before I get into the word, I, I'm going to talk about an individual that may not like to be talked about. But again, the truth is the truth. And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it brings joy to the individual that is being talked about. But this morning, I just want to talk, start off talking about my helpmate, my wife. Because see, Lonzo, I can't talk about yours. <laughs> I might mention some days, but I can't talk about it because again, don't live there, <laughs> amen. But my wife, Sheila, she has this thing with her flowers. She loves flowers. Now I declare from the moment that you turn on our street to come into our driveway to look up at the house, you know, it's all because of her. All that is out there, I tell you now, she planted those flowers and she arranged them just the way she wanted them to be put. And everything was done. Of course, she had to use the mighty hand of her husband and digging some of these holes around here, you know, but that was her idea of having these plants and these flowers, which is not a problem. They're very beautiful. But anytime you plant something, there, there's some labor behind it, even after it's been planted. You just don't plant a plant in the ground and, it, it, it got, and leave it there it's expected to do what you wanted to do. But nevertheless, <clears throat> the watering has to be done almost every day. If the good Lord don't, doesn't send some rain through, hey, it has to be done almost every day. But then as you come into the inside of our house, from the moment you come in there, a, a plant is gonna meet you at the door, which is good. I know they say the plants, you, you, you know, they help purify the air, you know, that the very air that we breathe, you, you know, it's a systematic way of detoxing some things, uh, the, the, the air that's, that's in the, that we're breathing in. And I can't think of it, but I know without a shadow of a doubt almost there's a plant in every room inside our house. And then we have that added addition that she wanted. I told her, I call that her little dog house, but I know that's not her dog house, it's the sunroom. But the sunroom is just full 
of plants. And I go, my goodness, you know, yes, you do have some areas to sit in there and some areas to move around and we can set our tables up in there, but I declare plants are everywhere. I just give praise to God, you know, hey, like I say, honey, you know what we say, the honey-do list? Yeah, honey has some things to do with those plants. And then as you leave from the sunroom, you got to go out on the deck area and in the backyard there. And good God almighty, I tried to count them one day, but it's just too many to count of all the plants that she has potted and put in the ground. And I thank God for it. You, you know, she's a lover of, of planting. And what's that old saying? You have got to have a green thumb. She does have a green thumb. Amen. But now to plant those plants, that was that soil that she had to use. And, and, and we go down to Lowe's and get that dirt in. It's called miracle Grow. Use that soil and it's a garden soil for all purpose and it did, helps to deliver bigger and more beautiful plants. We even used it in our garden this year and had some nice vegetables and fruits and flowers are doing good, but what's in that miracle grow? In that miracle grow is what they call a, a fertilizer and it's, it's a natural or synthetic origin that is applied to soil or to plant tissue to supply plant nutrition. In other words, it's something that is used to help a plant grow. See, a plant got to feed off of something, just like the trees and the grass and so forth. It, it has to feed off of something. And she bought that miracle grow and she used that miracle grow. Fertilizer is, it has three nutrients in it, though, that really is one of the three main areas that it has to have in order for a plant to really grow. And that's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And it has other stuff in it, but it has to have those things in it to really make it grow. I know how on the bag it says miracle grow. Sometimes it's good. It'll feed a plant for six months or eight months, you know, and I, I thought sometimes, you know, in planting our garden, you know, and she wanted to plant it in pots this year <clears throat> with the miracle growing, it says for eight months, I'm thinking, well, we planted in March, that's gonna be good. But no, don't always work out that way now because that fertilizer has been in that bag with that soil for a long time. So as you plant something in it, it starts to flourish real good, but it don't take long before the nutrients are gone and it has to be restored. But again, to God be the glory. I, I, I love my wife. I love her potting plants, but sometimes, you know, I heard her talking just the other day to her daughter and about Three months ago, some friends came by and they brought a plant just for her. And she planted that plant in a big pot. Well, it was in a pot, but then she put it in another big pot. But just a couple of days ago, it needed to be repotted. Now, I thought she would get a bigger pot, but no. She got three other pots, broke that plant down, spread it out, put it in that miracle grow, and has set them all out. And, and they're looking good. <laughs> and her daughter thought that she ought to have another little area where she could just put all her plants at, you know, on the outside, some of them. But I'm thinking, no, because the more plants you have, the more watering it's going to take. And that's labor. Yes, she'll water the front, but I'll do the back. And it's not a problem. But I had to learn, too, you know, you can't water some of them plants every day. I've learned. But again, to God be the glory. That's good concerning her and her parting of the plant. Now, the word of God today, dear people, I'm not going to preach to you. I'm just going to teach you a few things. Something you already know, something you may not know, but just open up your ears to hear and the heart to receive. 
I love the word of God. I love the Lord. He tells you and I. In Romans 12 and 2, he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So today, just to kind of renew your thinking process on some things, it's where God have me at today. A couple of weeks, months ago, I, I had an opportunity to, by God, to speak concerning who is God. And I heard a lot of people, a lot of comments, which were good. He's Jehovah, Nisi. He's Jehovah, Shalom. He's my healer. He's my provider. And that's all true. But that is what God is doing. That's his actions that he is performing. But then we finally got into it, you, you know, as to who God really is. And we know and we've learned now that God is a spirit. And then we had to talk about, well, what is a spirit? Now, I remember this man and his wife, you know, they had talked about it beforehand before it got to me. But again, you, you know, a spirit is a being that is bodiless, but can become visible. That's who God is. This morning, I want to use a subject of the potter and the clay. The potter and the clay. Because God is even called the potter in his word. He is the potter. But he is a spiritual, a spirit a supernatural being. He does not sleep and he does not slumber. He's not like you and I, where we have to get, this your earthly body has to get some sleep. But God doesn't. We read in the word in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And what beginning? It all started with him and nobody else, just God Almighty. And see, it is beyond our imagination to even see the, 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 and understand, I say to understand and to see the magnificent work of the Spirit of God how he established the heavens and then the earth. He is the one that put everything into play. Well, let me go back. Let me step back a little bit. Because he created. In other words, he didn't reach out and grab something. He spoke and it came into existence. He's not like you and I, you know, uh, ladies or men, men and women, when we gotta cook something, we gotta go get something. When we want to put on something, we gotta go gather uh, what, what we and dress the way we wanna be dressed, but God is not like that. Whatever he wanted, he spoke, and it was, and still is. God can, and he's doing everything the way he wants it to be. Sometimes things are just not working out the way we think it ought to be. 
but God has never asked me my thoughts. But he knows my thoughts are far off, but he never asked me concerning something that he wants to do. What do you think? How do you want it to be? He's not like that. He is the one that has put everything into motion that we see and hear. Truly, we got to know that this is his creation. He established it, and he did not make any mistake. Whatever he said, he created it, and it went to work just, you know why it worked so good and still is? Because that's God. That's God in his creation. Because if he had not said it, it would not have been so. But because he spoke it, it is. I know we're not supposed to question God on some things, but I don't mind asking God questions, you know, in the way things are in what we consider in this world, as we say, you know, I ask him a question and I love it that he always goes right back to his word that I have in my possession. Revelation, I asked God a question and in Revelation 4, 11, he, he sent me to, he says, and his word says, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou has created all things. God created all things. And this is the key thing. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. So I cannot, I can't find anything to complain about because God created it just the way he wanted it to be for his pleasure. So you and I, we need not complain about the weather. When it's too hot, as we say, Somebody asked me a question some time ago, and I told him, man, it, 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 it's just hot as hell. And he said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'll take that back. I haven't been there, and I don't want to go there. But when it gets to be 90, 95 degrees or 104 degrees like it has been, it is hot. But I don't complain when it gets cold either. Because God created that sun. And he set it in the place that it knows and it has never failed when to rise and to set. God has the world on his axle that is spinning. That by golly, we don't even know how fast it's going. But it's going so fast that it has everything locked in that everything that goes up, it will come down. Yes, we can send a man to the moon but it's gonna come back, amen? But as we see in verses, in the first chapter, God created, this is God's hand at work. This is God speaking things into place. This is God himself in action. And then we go into the second chapter there, and then we, I'm gonna go down to the seventh verse there and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. <laughs> a couple of months ago, I even more asked the question, who are you? Who are you? Look at what God did. When God had created the earth, it was void. It was dry. There was no water on it. But God caused the mist to come up. And he formed man of the dust 
of the ground. Huh. The same old dirty clay body that you and I look at every day. The same old dirty clay body that we put so much emphasis on making sure our hair is cut right, our makeup is on good, that we dress it right on the inside, on the outside. That same old clay body that we wrestle with. And I'm getting too fat. <laughs> Man, hey, I, I can't do this. I can't do like I used to. God formed that old clay body that you and I look at every day. He formed it, but his life was not in it. See, it was there, and he formed it. When he go back to his word, he said, let us make man. I, I, I like the way God does this planning process that, that we, don't, we don't understand. We don't do it his way, because when he said, let us make man, he knew the end before it ever began. He knew he had to have a redemption process in order to get things back in order the way he starts it out. Hmm. Let us make man in our image. You, you, you know now, come on now. Told you God is a spirit. But he has eyes to see. He has ears to hear. He has a tongue to talk. He has legs to walk and he has fingers. And Lord knows he had them loving arms that he wraps around us to protect us from any and all hurt, harm, and in danger. So the very dust of the ground, he formed and fashioned these old clay bodies that we look at. Then it goes on and he says, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life. Remember now, God is a spirit. Do he need the oxygen to, to breathe that we breathe? No, he doesn't. He don't need the food and the water like these your clay bodies does. He don't need the oxygen that these old clay body does, but he breathes of himself into it. And it, man, became a living soul. <laughs> to create is to cause or to bring into existence and he brought you and I into existence by and putting a part of him into this here old clay body. Well, you think, well, how can that be? Well, now we got to go to the St. Matthews. Now we got to look at our Lord, our Savior, the birth of Jesus Christ, who was his father. It wasn't Joseph. Well, so just like Mary told the Lord, you know, how can this be? Because I haven't seen it there. I haven't been with a man. God didn't give her an answer. He just simply said, My, I will come upon thee. The holiness of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt receive. And she did. Nothing but the mighty move of God. The spirit of the Lord came upon her to take on the old fleshly body to show you and I that if he can do it, you and I can do it as well. But he took it on without the sinfulness thereof that you and I were born into.
Jeremiah 1 and 5 <clears throat> says it this like this. This is God talking to you and I, because anytime you and I pick up the word, he's talking to you and I. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. See, there's a lot of things going on in this world, in this mankind that that we got to take another, we got to take a stand for. I heard it in Texas, how Texas has put out a law to ban abortions in that state that it should not be done. But now I heard another rise from the women in this here, what we call the United States and Texas. They are taking a stand that, that is, is a big discussion that a woman have the right to say whether or not she should have the child that is in her. Huh. See, now remember now, where did that life come from? It came from nobody but God. Come on now. I know we remember Abraham and Sarah. We, you, you, you know, we, we like to look at the fact that they were old. But when God spoke as to when she will conceive, it took place when he inputted the spirit in that body. Flesh can only come together and reproduce flesh, but it cannot and never will reproduce the soul. That's God's creation. We need to get on the right track. Yes, I know that our children has gotten on our nerves. Sometimes we make that statement, I brought you into this world, I'll take you out. And, uh, no, God is the life giver. And we're not the ones to be taking no one's life. He is the one. I love it that God's creation was the, sub was the subject of a divine counsel. Like you say, you know, when he said, let us. Hmm. He was talking to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Again, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There is only one God. And it's way beyond these imaginations of ours. Even though for all the college we've gone to with bachelors and associates and all these degrees that we got, we, we can be sometimes dumber than a rock. We can be because it's way beyond what mankind will teach you as to the magnificent works of God Almighty. God breathes of the breath of life into the old clay body. God is the life form in the body. His breath carries his life force, but not necessarily the presence of his person. Man became a living soul. What is a soul? A soul is a living organism a breathing creature, the invisible spiritual part of man. The soul is what keeps this old clay dirt upright. For without the soul, there is no life within it. The word of God says to be absent from the body is to be where? Present with the Lord. This here old dirt that we look at and cherish so much never will, never will 
enter into our father's house. Flesh and blood never has and never will enter into his kingdom. Never. First John 4 and 4 tells you and I said, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. But greater, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the spirit of the Lord that is in us. Greater is he that is in us than he that rules the world. But there's a battle going on between this here old dirty flesh and the spirit of Lord that is within, within it. It's a battle. It's a constant battle. Flesh will never surrender under God's command. Never. It has a desire and think that it should live forever and want to live forever. But it is the inner man that is the one that lives forever. God tells you and I said, don't fear him that can only destroy the body that you and I look at every day. Don't fear him that can only destroy the body. But fear him that can destroy the body and the soul. God is the one that is in control. He is our creator. He never stops. Ezekiel 18 and four, God simply says, behold, all souls are mine. Nothing belongs to you. I told my wife when we got married, I, 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 I said, yeah, God said, man and one man that finds a wife, finds is a good thing. Yes, we are married together. Yes, we become one, but you don't belong to me. It seems hard to understand, yes, but we're married, but you don't belong to me because it's that inner man, it's that inner being, it's that soul that belongs to God. It doesn't belong to me. And neither do I belong to you because there's going to come a day and a time that we don't know when, don't know the day, don't know the hour, don't know how. But God is going to call that back to him that he and put in there. And that is the soul. So he is the potter in the clay. He is the one that and put it, the miracle growing into the dirt to cause it to stretch and come alive and function the way he wanted to function. So people, we just got to get ready. We got to transform our and renew our mind and not be conformed to the way of the world. Yes, I see and hear of a lot of things going on from the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the flooding, to the fires, to the, to, to the COVID, to the variance, to this and that, God is still in control. It is the inner man that he is concerned about because the flesh, there is no good thing in the flesh. So like he said, Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let us change our thought process. Now, I know I ask some questions to some people and I get some strange answers, but I even ask, you know, what is it in this world that makes life worth living for? Uh, Job tells you and I, naked we came into this world and naked we're going to leave. We didn't bring nothing, and we sure cannot take anything with us. Jesus tells us, just as plain, 
He could say, I go to prepare a place for you. He said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. See, you and I, we can't build on it. That's Jesus preparing a place for us because but there's a place in heaven, in God's house for you and I, if we choose to be on his side. Well, we, hey, no stick, no stones, no, no mortar, no brick, no nails, no screw, no designing it of our own uh, as to how we want it. But Jesus said, I prepare a place for you in my father's house that where I am, there ye may be also. Ye may be. <laughs> Heaven is our home. This world and all that we see and hear, it will be destroyed. When Jesus returns, none of this will matter. The money that you have in the bank, the clothes that you have in your closet, the shoes on your feet, the type of car that you drive, even the very house. It's not a home, but the house that you're living in, it will be destroyed. So now we know who the potter is. And now we know what's inside this hero clay body. It's God Almighty. So let us get ready. Let us get on one accord. Let us change our way of thinking and renewing our mind. God tells you and I in 1 John 2 chapter 15 and 16 verse, love not the world nor the things that are in it. He says that if meaning any man that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He's speaking to these hearts of ours. So let us let go and let God. Let us seek his kingdom, which is in heaven. It's not here on earth. It's in heaven where he sits high and looks low. He has the whole world in his hand. It's his creation. He spoke of it into existence. And it was not anything that had to do with mankind. The potter and the clay. Heavenly Father, we thank thee and we praise thee ever so much, dear Lord God. For this your day. For this your wording, dear Lord God. And this your understanding, dear Father, just who we are. But we fail sometimes, dear Lord God, to give you the praise, the honor, and all the glory and how we tend to these hero clay bodies. From the ground it came from and to the ground it will return. But the inner man will come to be with thee in that day and that time. So Father, we thank thee and we praise thee. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen.